I've just tagged a new version of the Rich Text Laravel package, and to celebrate, I thought it would be good to do a short series in this channel about the package and how you can use it. If you don't know what this package does, it's the backend integration for the Trix editor. If you were on Rails, you can use Action Tags, which is the same thing. I wanted to use Trix with Laravel, so I ported Action Tags to Laravel. And that's basically the rich text Laravel package. To kick off this series, I thought it would be cool to do a deep dive in the Workbench application that ships with the package. Let's get started. So this is the package, the repository, all the documentation you can find in the readme. It's all in a single place, so you can easily scan it. As I mentioned, the package ships with a Workbench application, which is a demo application. And that's the application that we are going to explore in this first video. It's just a walkthrough. We'll just cover things from a high level. So let's clone this repo locally. We can CD into it and run composer install as you would do if you were working on a feature for the package or whatnot. As I said, we will be exploring the Workbench application that ships with the package. If you don't know what Workbench is, I have another video over here where I'm covering Workbench. It's essentially a package that lets you keep a an actual lot of application side by side with the package so you can build the package while using the package in this application at the same time. It's pretty cool, so check out the video if you want to know more about it. Once the dependencies are installed, we can run composer. I'm actually going to open a new panel and from there run composer serve. Let's open NeoVin over here and yeah, now we should be able to open that in the browser. And yeah, so this is the demo application that the package ships with. Uh, there's a blog application, there's a chat application, and there's a live wire example. So if we check the blog post application, you can create a new post or you can view an existing post that was seeded into the demo application. Did this demo application also has HTML sanitization built in so you can take a look at that uh, to implement in your own application because this is a must if you're doing HTML uh, content. Like if you're letting your users write HTML, you gotta be careful with the sanitization aspect of it. So you can take a look at that if you want to. This over here is an HTML document. This is the rich text Laura. This is tricks. This is not tricks. This is the rendered HTML, but you can see the tricks editor over here. And this is the tricks toolbar. This is the content. These are images uh, and all that. There is a mentions feature, as you can see over here at the bottom. So you can add, you can press the add symbol and mention someone. You can take a look at the code to build that. It's all in the workbench application. We can save it and redirect back to the render version. And then you can see the embedding, the, the, mention that we just added over here. Um, and over here, you can also see how we can easily convert the rich text documents to plain text over here. The package lets you do that automatically. And it's able to convert images, all, all kinds of attachments, but images too. So we get the caption over here. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You can easily extract links. So if you're linking, if you adding links to your documents, we can uh, extract them later and do some post processing on them, maybe query them, getting the content, something like that, whatever you want. And we can also extract the mentions or any kind of attachments really, um, but mentions it's one kind of attachment over here. And at the bottom, you can see a similar looking Trix input over here, but it's a minimal version of it. It doesn't use the full feature of tricks, but you can see how you can customize tricks to your needs. So if you don't want to support all the features, you can hide them and you can later ex remove them, the functionality from tricks itself, which is not the same thing by the way, but we'll cover that in this series too. There is a add mention over here. So the same feature that we built earlier, we can use over here to mention so as you can see, it's easy to build features for tricks and reuse that across your entire application. This blog application is actually using just forms, but if you're using Livewire, there's an example in the Workbench application too. I installed Livewire in the Workbench application. 
and we are using Alpine and Entangle over here. This is a different instance of the editor, but it comes with everything. So we also have mentions and this is using Stimulus, Alpine and Livewire, um, if you want to do that. Um, but as I said, this is the same feature. So it, the same feature as we saw in the other editor for the blog example. So you're able to reuse these features across your entire application. So that's pretty cool. But I'd like to dive a little deeper into the chat example over here. As you can see, it's a regular chat application. You might think that this is not tricks, but this is actually tricks. Hey, I'm tricks too. So I'm going to bold and italic using sh shortcuts. This is tricks, but the toolbar is hidden and I can view the toolbar over here by clicking on this button over here. And what's also cool about this chat example is that I can copy this URL and paste it over here. And as you can see, it actually renders a open graph embed inside the tricks editor. So that's cool. Um, you can keep it or you can remove it if you want to, but yeah. So this is the feature that I'd like to dive a little deeper on because you, you'll see how you can attach pretty much anything to your tricks documents. Okay. So the workbench application is a Laravel application, but it only contains the files that we need. The main file is the web routes over here, and it contains all the routes this application has. Um, if we look down, there's the mentions, attachments, uploading and all that. So let's go to the layout file. So this application doesn't have a build system. So I'm using Tailwind CDN over here to style the application. And I also have all the JavaScript pretty much in a script tag over here. I'm using stimulus in most parts of the workbench application. So to use it without a build system, I just have to import the controller, then start the stimulus application and then register my controllers as normal. And then I can use this key to connect this stimulus controller to my DOM elements. We'll see more about that later on. If we take a look at the chat application, there's an index blade file and some partials. If we take a look at the index file, we'll see that there's a composer over here, which is the way the user type, the message composer, if you will. And then the message composer just includes a separate tricks instance. So this tricks instance over here is the tricks editor itself. We have the hidden input, which is the thing that will be submitted by the browser, by the form itself. Tricks, the tricks editor is not what gets submitted. It's this hidden input. So we give it an ID and we tell the tricks editor to use this input to sync the state and tricks will do that behind the scenes. I'm using stimulus over here. So there is two controllers, rich text mentions and O embed. Whenever we paste something to tricks, this event will be called and it will call the pasted method in the O embed controller. So if we go back to the app layout, there should be a O embed controller over here in a pasted action. So this will receive an event. We'll get the range of the pasted content from the event itself. This is specific to tricks. And then we'll use this range, this selection range, because this pasted content was already inserted into the tricks document. So what we have to do is we have to get what was pasted based on the range that we got from this event. So we will extract that if it's a valid URL, we return that. Otherwise we just return no, which will just stop the pasting process over here. So if it's a valid URL, we'll convert that to a link. And this is not something that tricks does automatically. So if you paste a link, it doesn't convert that to a link for you. You have to do that yourself. And this is where we are doing that. We'll get the current selected range, which is basically the cursor position for the user. We'll change the selected range. So we'll select the URL itself. Then we'll record an undo entry, which means the user will be able to revert this change if they want to with a control Z. And then we'll activate the href action of tricks, which adds the link. So we just have to give it a URL, which is the, the URL that we just pasted in and then we will reset the cursor position. So 
basically what we are doing is we're, we're selecting the URL, we are converting that, we are activating this href action of tricks, and then we are resetting the cursor position to wherever it was before we did this. So the user doesn't uh, lose the cursor position. After we convert this to a link, we'll process the open graph embed. And this method will just do a fetch request to the backend passing this URL, and then it will get whatever was returned and and that any point will return a JSON object, and then we'll convert that to a tricks attachment over here. So we will get a, a set of attachments, and then we'll pass that along to create a new tricks attachment instance over here. And that's pretty much it on the client side. But on the back end, if we take a look at the route, uh, there is a post open graph embed over here. So we are validating the URL that was given. We will prevent users from trying to mess with our private network of our application. So whenever we are processing URLs given by the user, we have to make sure that these URLs doesn't resolve to a private IP in our network. So the user might be able to um, reach for applications that they don't have access to using this feature, which We'll prevent that by just passing, getting the host name of the URL, um, passing that, getting the IP, and then checking is this a private IP or a public IP. And uh, if it's a public IP, we'll keep going, otherwise we'll fail the validation. And then once we have the a valid URL, we'll create the open graph embed over here. And this open graph embed is just a class that implements the attachable contract. So anything, and I mean it, anything can be an attachment in tricks. And this is really powerful. This create from URL is a method from this fetching trait over here. And we will receive a URL, we'll fetch the HTML document. And so we are doing a an HTTP request to that URL. There's a trickery over here to handle um, Twitter embeds because Twitter used to provide open graph, but it, it doesn't anymore. But that is a fixed Twitter domain that allows us to generate open graph embeds from Twitter URLs. That's not relevant. So we'll make a, an HTTP request, we'll get the body and we'll create a, an HTML document from that. And this is a helper that ships with the package. So it, it just creates a DOM document instance from a given HTML. And yeah, so we'll create that document and then we will extract some attributes from it. So we'll do a DOM XPath query over here. We'll get all the meta tags that starts with the OG prefix. OG is open graph. Um, and we will only extract the attributes that we want to use, which is this list over here, title, URL, image and description. And once we have that, we'll return the list of attributes over here, which will return to this part, which will try to create an open graph instance from these attributes. And this will just run some validations on the attributes that we extracted from the document. And if it's valid, we'll create the instance of the open graph image, which will in turn return over here and be converted to an array, which gets handed to the uh, stimulus controller and creates the tricks attachment. This is pretty much it. This is the functionality. Again, we are pasting our URL. It's converting that to a link. So if you, if we enable the toolbar over here, you can see that it's actually a valid link. You can remove the embed if you want to, but you can keep it. Yeah, but this only covers the writing side of the document itself. The rendering side, which is when we post and we are rendering the messages over here. For that to work, we have to take a look at the providers, workbench service provider over here. So we are registering a custom attachable over here and this callback will give us, so whenever the rich text Laravel package is rendering attachments, 
it will run, it will try to create attachments. Um, there's a set a list of attachments it knows how to render for what it doesn't know how to render. You can give it your own custom attachments over here and you will receive a DOM element node instance and you have to return an attachable contract and that's pretty much it. So you have to create the open graph embed instance which implements the attachable contract which uh, you register as a custom attachable over here. And one more thing before we wrap up, there's a lot of things over here. Um, don't worry about this. There's going to be a video dedicated. Uh, we, are rebuild the, we are going to rebuild this feature from scratch, but when it's rendering open graphs to HTML, this is the view that it's going to be used. So there's a resources view rich text Laravel attachables open graph embed over here. And this is the view that we are using proof that this is actually the same view. Let's refresh over here, inspect the DOM. And then you can see that this is the class that we are using over here. So if you change your mind or if, if you want to tweak the open graph embeddings later on, you can do that over here. You have total control over this HTML that is rendered in the message over here. That's pretty cool. So that's it for the first video. It's just a walkthrough on the package and the Workbench application. So you can see some examples on how you can integrate tricks with your application. In the next video, I'll show you how to install the rich text Laravel package into an existing Laravel application. And from there, we'll build some more advanced stuff on top of that. So. Yeah, I hope you're excited for this new series and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.